Итак, всем привет, привет, привет. Пока еще никого нет. Мы набираем наших зрителей на прямой эфир. Сегодня мы пообщаемся с голливудским актером, мастером маршал артс Марком Дакаскасом. Поговорим с ним о том, что происходит на сегодняшний день в Лос-Анджелесе и как обстоят дела в киноиндустрии. Как он лично пере, переносит все э, случившиеся не так давно трагические моменты, да, которые происходят в мире в киноиндустрии. Также мы давно очень не виделись с Марком, мы с ним снимались в фильме 10 лет назад. Эфир будет проходить на английском языке. Заранее прошу прощения тех, кто по-английски не очень разговаривает. Мы сможем потом перевести текст. Ну и во время интервью я тоже постараюсь каким-то образом переводить. Итак, если у вас будут какие-то вопросы к Марку Дакаскусу, который снялся в фильме Джо Уик, третья часть, недавно также он снимался в очень многих фильмах, до этого, пожалуйста, пишите, задавайте вопросы, мы обязательно найдем минутку и э, зададим их Марку. Ну что ж, присоединяем. Думаю, что уже пора присоединять. Итак, Марк Дакаскас, легенда, любимый актер моей молодости. Ожидаем в эфире. Марк. Yeah. <laughs> Добрый вечер, София. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to see you, Mark. I'm so, so happy to see you. Uh, you look beautiful. Thank you. So You're tell welcome. me, how are you? How is the situation for you? What well, are you doing at home? Uh, it's yes. I, I mean, I'm a little bit outside of Los Angeles, California, and as you probably know, uh, a lot of our states are in quarantine. Fortunately for us, we live uh, about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Los Angeles. So although um, they want us to stay in the house, and we do most of the time, it is not yet illegal to go outside and enjoy nature because we have a lot of space and there are not a lot of people around here. So fortunately for, for my family and our neighbors, We're able to go in the hills and um, some, sometimes do little hikes and bike rides and, and walk without How long are you available to be outside? For how long It's, are you available to be outside? Well, um, as of right now, there, there are no real stipulations. They just want us to, um, you know, not congregate, of course, not get close to other people. And I have seen in some parks or near parks that there have been policemen so that kids don't get excited and start playing basketball or, or party, you know, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of teenagers. I have three teenagers, so I'm having to right. remind them every day, take it easy, guys. So there is no, no panic, but at the same time, everyone is kind of on pause, right? Yes. Um, and like I said, it's for us because we're outside of Los Angeles. It's not so bad. But from what I see uh, on the news, inside of the cities uh, even los angeles it's a it's a little different uh, how is it for you and your family well for uh, russian people i think we got the information a little bit later so it seems like we're we're just getting to the point where everyone is starting to realize how serious the situation is and for this right. week everyone started to stay home even though it was two weeks of quarantine for us Um, but it's not strict. It's like it's your choice to stay home. Right. It was like that. But now it's 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 different. Now we okay. really have to. And there is uh, some IDs numbers you have to have in order to get to the city. Uh -huh. So we have we have to um, you know add ourselves and, and, and get right. this number to get inside. Okay. The city. And All people right. cannot well, work. I mean, it's horrible. Even. <clears throat> Um, like all the factories, they stopped, all the schools stopped, but we yeah. still have to pay salary. Some people who pay salary, they have to pay. People who have to work and pay them along. It's, it's just a mess, but... It is a mess. It is a mess. You know, I, I guess the, the silver lining, I mean, lucky for us nowadays, at least, at least we have technology so we can still connect with our friends and, and stay in touch. You know? So tell me, how's your actors' friends do? 
how do they train? Do you guys like communicate with each other? What do you do? Yeah, you know, um, as we're doing right now, we do FaceTime, uh, emails, texting, and then we, we keep track of each other on, on Instagram. But uh, that's the thing is, is now what, I guess the big question for actors, artists, people that need to, you know, keep their minds and bodies and hearts in shape. What is discipline? What does discipline mean to you? And how can you, I mean, I, I had a conversation with my kids yesterday. Mm -hmm. How can we go into this and come out better for it? Is it possible, you know? Mm -hmm. And in some ways, possibly, because it certainly forces us to be resourceful and figure out how we can be creative and how we can learn. And, and I don't mean just learning things, but how can we learn about ourselves? How can we be better people, you know, when we come out of this? How can we be better people? That's right. I mean, I think there's, I think there's everyone had a chance to think about this stuff. Yeah. So just, yeah. you know, realize that we cannot be uh, always on the control of our lives. But, no, a absolutely. Control. Yeah, there's, you know, life, you know, it always gives you twists and turns and there's always... The, the one thing that you can always expect in life, I think, is to be unexpected, you know, to, right. to, to have something that's going to change right when you make plans, you know, things happen. But there's lots of people who still doesn't understand the seriousness of the situation. Mark, like, I know that you're working actual, like, you have so many projects going on Thank and you. they just stop, like, all of a sudden. Uh, yes. What do you think about that? How is the production? people are going to deal with this situation what about you like you have projects like for example like joe we probably wanted to shoot guys the the fourth part of this how is it well, going to go like all the productions that stopped what's okay well um thank you and sophia i think you just gave me about six questions all in one sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited to see you um you know, the thing with, with, with productions, um, yes, I, I had, um, during this time, since December until now, I would have been on two different movies in two different countries and a big Comic-Con. And of course, everything shut down. And we hope it's just postponed, but with, with everything going on in the world, um, possibly they're canceled because things, people have to, you know, we, we may all have to figure out a different way to work. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what that's going to be because as of right now, I understand we don't even have a vaccine. And, you know, uh, we're a little behind on, on getting tested. So I was, I, was, I was telling my family with being in, in Hawaii and then London and then in um, New York, all within three weeks, right before we had the quarantine, there's a good chance that I was exposed. Now, um, maybe I wasn't, but I, I can't help but think I was. Um, so I, I'm either very, very lucky that I didn't actually get it in my body or I'm asymptomatic. You know, I, I don't you know. Think to me, like I, I, I was really sick for a few weeks before this uh, whole media thing started. That's the same thing what I feel. Maybe we already have had that before. Yeah, you know, because I understand everybody gets affected differently. Uh, I have a very good friend and, um, you know, it's, it's somewhat of a tragic story because he was tested positive. He was tested positive. And for him, he had maybe just two days of not going to work or training. Uh, he had some sweats. He, he felt like he had a very strong flu, but that was it. The problem is um, he gave it to his older mother and she passed away. So uh, it's very serious. And it, it does seem based off of the, the data that we have and the information that um, people that are older, are more vulnerable and susceptible. However, uh, my, uh, my sons, they told me of some elite athletes, some professional athletes that are very fit 
and they're in their 20s and 30s, and they got the COVID, and it hit them very hard, um, very high fever. Uh, they were you know, they get out of it. Okay. But yeah, but they felt they, they got hit really bad. So each person is different. And um, I, I guess right now, the only thing we can really do is, you know, stay away from each other, which going back to your question about productions. Um, well, I, I, I have lived in LA, as you know, for many years, and I remember how comfy it is for homeless people. Um, how, how does the streets look right now? I mean, there's so many people outside. Yes. Well, in terms of, of the homelessness, we, we, you know, we have a, a big challenge in America because we have a lot of, it seems like we have a lot of things that need to be restructured. And yes, there are a lot of people um, in different parts of Los Angeles living on the streets. And what, it, and what does the government do with them? Do they, you know? well, that, that's, that's a good question. And I think that's, you know, um, <laughs> Oh, it's like they shouldn't I, be outside, correct? Like it's illegal to well, be outside. You know, <laughs> they have no yeah. choice. You know, I, I think, you know, definitely we as Americans, we need to restructure things and we need to help our people. And our, I feel, just personally, I feel like our taxes need to go more to health, education, and um, a, me a means of of, of getting around. I was going to say public transportation, but right now, I suppose it's good that we don't have very good public transportation in America because of, you know, people getting together. The places that we do have that, you know, like in New York, unfortunately, because the, the, the COVID is transmitted, you know, through interaction, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a big problem. But in terms in of- California is more home, spread out. Like it's, it's more California air. Is, is much more spread out. And uh, we're lucky. In, we're lucky in this respect because uh, most of us drive cars. So it's one person, one car, you know? So for this particular time, it was a good thing that we had so many cars. Usually it's not so good because we have such insane traffic, as you know, crazy yes. traffic, hour and a half or two hours just to get yes. six or seven or eight miles. It's mind boggling. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's not yeah. in comparison to Moscow, believe me. And you've been okay. there a few times. Yes. <laughs> like... <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, so, so with the homeless, um, we have a lot of work to do. Um, a lot of people need help. Uh, and we need to, I think there are a lot of variables involved. You know, there are a lot of different things involved. There. Yeah, so true. Mark, I have, I have questions. For okay. You. Ready? Let's do it. Uh, so, um, if, um, I mean, I look at you, it's been 10, 10 years since we shot our crazy. Film. 10 years, that's crazy. Haven't changed. I, you look the same, I, though. I cut my hair. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and you still look great. And I, and I see on your Instagram, you can still do your splits and jumping and all that. Yes, that's right. So, you know, I, 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 Sophia, may I real quick, uh, I'd like to tell your fans and, and everybody that's visiting us, so, Sophia and I did a, a movie 10, 12 years ago, something like that. And she was telling me about dance. And, you know, she's an incredible ballerina, incredible dancer. And I asked her to show me something. And I just remember, Sophia, I, I don't know which scene we were doing, but you, you grabbed your leg, your foot, and you put it above your head. So that <laughs> alone is impressive, you know, that, that's impressive. Um, I've seen it a few times, but not with the beautiful line that you had. But what was incredible was that while your foot was above your head, you let go of your foot with your hand and your leg was still there. <laughs> I have a now, photo of it. <laughs> that, that, I've never seen, I've seen it in pictures, I've seen it on video and movies, but I've never seen that in real life. So to be standing just a few feet away from you, with you standing perfectly straight and your leg like this, I was just, I was in awe. So. I mean, and it's you telling me, I mean, you tell me, I, I saw you, I mean, we had a few glasses of champagne here in Moscow when we came to introduce this movie. Remember when you just jumped from one, like from one place? I mean, it's normal, like, 
Oh, well, thank you. But, thank you. But, but I'm not you, flexible. Like I'm not flexible like you. You are crazy. Three and then stood up. Like, just, <laughs> I was like, Mark, excuse me, can you repeat it one more time? Thank you. Thank you. But but I, I can't do that, Sophia. I can't I can't even come close to that. Crazy. So well, yeah, I hope that, that we're gonna do a movie again where we're we're gonna fight. Not I love that. that. I love that. that. But I would love that. Don't don't be up. Don't beat me up, though. I'm an old man now. What was the hardest uh, man or hardest scene for you in our movie? If you can remember, since then that for was us so when we when we were working. Yes. Uh, okay. It sounds it, it may be a, a little bit boring, but one of them that was very difficult, I think, was our first day, because we had. Um, we had the fatigue zone, we had the backpacks, and we were doing, you know, we were, we were playing military, you and I. And in that one scene, we were creeping up on this house, sneaking up on this house. And we did, I don't know how many takes. Like, it felt 20, like 20 or 30 or takes over and over, going up this hill and crouching down and we had our weapons and everything. And I and, had a fever, remember? And you had a fever. And I want to say that you were so tough because uh, we were all tired and you could have easily said, you know, you could have asked for uh, a stunt double for some of the takes from behind or from afar. You did not. And you could have also asked if you could go into your trailer. You did not. I was looking around for you, making sure you were okay. Yeah, I looked in the so corner. Nice. You, were, you were laying on the ground. Like a real soldier, just taking your time, resting, right. you know. So that was the uh, hardest. Uh, uh, that was a hard project, beginning. but because of my um, health, that was the, the nicest experience. Because we had oh. so much to talk and so much. It was my second movie I think I've done in my well, life. It was it was great working with you. It was really great. And you did great because that was you know stuff like that. It it seems it seems easy, but when you do it twenty or thirty times, when the sun's coming down. And you've got these packs on and you're just doing it. I mean, it, it gets hard. It gets hard. You and know, to keep the energy <laughs> up and emotional and, and, then, and then do your dialogue afterwards. So you did, you did really well. That's right. That's so interesting to remember. And when I watch it back, I, I, so, I so much remember that with Max and Sasha. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to watch it again. So I need to watch it again. So is there new projects you're, you're working on right now? And how's it going? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, uh, I have a few projects. So the couple of projects that I was supposed to be on, I'm hoping they come back. So uh, I can't really talk about them right now, but we'll see. Um, there's another movie that I did uh, in, well, there's two movies that I did after John Wick. And mm -hmm. both of them were shot in Thailand with my very good friend who's the director of both which ksi ananda and the first movie called the driver was with my wife and my daughter and it was it was a blast because julie played my wife and our daughter played our daughter That's and she so did really well nice. sophia it was really fun you know and it's a different take on a zombie movie. It's a family story. It's a love story with the. For how long are you know, guys together? Uh, oh, like oh, 25 years or something? Yeah, something like 20. Well, we've been married for 20. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, boy. She's still upstairs. So she, she is how so long? beautiful. You guys well, are thank such you. amazing couple. Thank you. Thank you. But we got married in 90, 1998. So. 23 years 23 years married and then we we met on a movie um back in 93 crying freeman i think we did that in 93 94. So we, met on the movie and and fell in love. we met on a movie and, and now we have three kids crazy and they're so but yeah their older son is so thank strong you. like you thank you thank they both beat me up so it's you know <laughs> life how long was it uh, from joe week third like in, in, in oh. what period of oh. time did you shot your two movies and tell us about the movie uh, how did you prepare yourself okay okay well okay. 
really your accent. Thank you. I was Thank laughing you. so hard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did, did you did you see it in the original version in English or in did you see it with Russian? In oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Um, so John Wick. Let's see. I was in New York for almost three months. That's where I shot my part. And then, of course, Halle Berry and the crew um, and Keanu, they were in North Africa in actually, I think, Morocco, where they shot her part. But the bulk of it was in New York, three months long. And how much time did I have to prepare for it? Well, Sophia, um, as an athlete and dancer, you'll appreciate this, I hope. I had no time to prepare for it because uh, originally I was not supposed to play zero. I wasn't going to. Uh, it's a long story and I'll, I'll tell you another time, but uh, I was asked to play a cameo in the movie. So I was going to work sometime in October or November. However, in May on a Sunday night, on a Sunday night, I get a text from the director, Chad Stahelski, incredibly talented and right. wonderful, as you know. And, and he texts me and he says, hey, DeCoscos, uh, give me a call tomorrow morning. So I text him back, we'll do Chad. So I call him Monday morning and he says, things have changed. I said, what's going on? He goes, well, our original lead villain, Zero, is no longer part of the show and I'd like to invite you. And I went, <laughs> um, Chad, uh, just to confirm, you'd like me to do what? And he said, I'd like you to be zero. And I went, <gasps> yes, please. And he I said, wait, wait, wait. He said, read the script first. And I said, don't need to, I want it. He goes, read the script, <laughs> don't need to, read the script. Okay. Yes. So he emailed the script. I read it two hours later. Of course, it was so much fun. It was great. And I said, yes, I read the script. I love it. I want to do it. Thank you. I am honored. Um, would you be open to me playing with some, you know, the way the, the way the character is? Would you collaborate with the character or mm -hmm. are you set on something? He goes, no, no, make it your own. Fantastic. Next question was, Chad, when do you want me? Because uh, I was in Los Angeles and the production was in New York. When would you like me out there? He said, tonight. <laughs> it's like a new so, movie. <laughs> so text on Sunday. I read the script on Monday. Monday night, I leave for New York. I arrive Tuesday. Um, I, I, I prepare on Wednesday. I ask them, what he wants me to do? I, I, I wanted to, you know, shave the head because I thought for zero, zero means nothing. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah. So I asked him if I could shave my head. He said, do it. I shaved the head and Thursday I'm shooting. So it was so fast. So for your fights, such an incredible fight. I mean, they're Thank just, you. It's, it's, it's outright. I mean, I've never seen like that in the movies before. Thank I'm you. Saying, like, Thank so you. And well, did, did you made them yourself or was there a oh, choreographer yeah absolutely they uh, chance to uh is a very uh accomplished stuntman and and he and his partner david leach they you know they've been uh doing stunts for maybe over 30 years uh chad was keanu reeves stunt double on the matrix movies so he knows he knows stunts so um Chad has a whole team um, of incredible choreographers and stuntmen. And so he tells the stunt, uh, the stunt people basically what he wants. And then his, his choreographers go at it and put together uh, this huge puzzle. And then they work in Keanu and I to start learning the choreography and what feels comfortable we keep. And if there's something that we have a hard time with or you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. feel right. Uh, we collaborate and we make it better. Of course, mm -hmm. what, what happened so much was that the choreographers put the fight together. Keanu and I learned it. And then Chad would see it and go, hmm, let's change it. Let's do something else. So you know how that is. 
you know, with choreography. So, you know, uh, we break, you know, we take a break. So it was just on set, on set you were deciding what to do, really? Yes. Yeah, yes. Not, set, because, you have no time for it. Like, it's, it's not a lot. You know, that's why you have to come prepared. You know, we had choreography set. But if you want to change, you've got to make it happen quick because we have hundreds of people on the crew. We have uh, a lot to do in a short amount of time. And that's why it is so important to, to be prepared uh, as best you can. Um, you know, as, yeah, as, that's as like a dream man. every day. I watch your Instagram and you're always well, thank you. I, those I, things you're doing. I mean, it's not like some footage or something. It's you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, with the thank you, Sophia. You know, you know, I, I, I really thank uh, my mother and father because they're martial arts teachers. They're my my first teachers, and then my capoeira teacher, Amen Santo, because in that fight, in the big finale fight with um, with Keanu, uh, Chad and the choreographers wanted to kind of put in you know, different things that I've learned over the years or, or that they'd seen me do. So they put in some capoeira, they put in the different types of martial arts. And that's because of my training. And because I always feel like I always feel better when I'm physical. And as an actor who sometimes does fights, you, you need to be prepared because when you're lucky, you get these texts from great directors like Chad Stahelski that says come tonight. <laughs> that's right. Like For me, I was training um ballet for my whole life and yes I used, to, I used to have a question with Sophia why did you stop ballet or why did you leave that and I never left it's just some part of my life that I'm always preparing myself to be ready to go on stage yeah so well, the, great thing, the great thing about ballet um from what I heard Michelle Yo from Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon is also a dancer yeah as is uh, the other um as it Jiang Ziyi who also played in that movie. And they're both dancers. Dancers make wonderful, um, you know, fighters in, in, in movies because you know choreography. Yeah, you're flexible, you're strong, you know, you, you know how to move. It's fantastic, fantastic training. Yes. Um, Mark, um, how do you think we, as an actors or dancers or your martial arts, how? How can we uh, help? What can we do for people who are staying home? Is there something you would recommend um, for your audience? Is there oh, goodness. Things, well, exercise, except thinking about <laughs> no, <laughs> something no. deep, but like We're, how can you physically make this time easier? Well, I, I think, um, well, one, I think I think we as actors need to stay prepared because at some point, at some point, you know, God bless all of us, we're going to get through this and things will, you know, will start working again. And I don't know, will it just be electronically for a little while or will we be able to, you know, will we find a vaccine and, and, and work in person again? But I think we need to be prepared. And um, just like I, I told my kids, how do we come out of this better, as better people? Because I think, there, you know, we can find ways. Human beings, we're all very resourceful and creative. So what can we do every day to, to help our bodies? What can we do every day to help our minds, you know, learn a little something or, or write or learn a skill or maybe just take time and breathe and dream and daydream and wonder and, and think about things that happened in the, pa in the past and think about possible futures. You know, I think we have to, to, um, to keep the flow going. And I think probably the most important thing is to be present, to be present with right now. We can't hide away. We can't pretend it's not happening. We have to be in our minds, in our bodies, just like Shakespeare said. And I love this speech, you know, to be or not to be, to be <laughs> present, to be alive or not. And I'm hoping that we choose to be here. We're just like you and I are together right here. Well, I think, I think people need to, I'm encouraging them to be as present 
as possible. And it's not easy because sometimes, sometimes you want to hide away and sometimes it's useful to just, you know, disengage. But I think most of the time it's, it's, it's very important and helpful and beneficial for everyone to be present, eyes and ears. Well, by listening to what you're saying, I feel, I feel like, you know, almost jealous. You have your love of your life. You have your three kids there. I mean, you're calm and, you know, it's, of course, just relax and, you know, get this love. To, but what to do to those who are just lonely in their middle apartment? And, I, and they, I, that's the point. Like, you're right, absolutely, for me, yeah, for those. Yes. Okay. So, so Sophia, <laughs> yes. Um, well, well, right now, absolutely, I am lucky because I, I have my wife, we have three kids, we have two big dogs. <laughs> and what is your so son, excited. what is your older son doing? Like, how is he feeling? He probably is, he's oh, probably he's, missing his girlfriend or friends, He's right? going crazy. He's, he's going <laughs> crazy. He's wanting to be with his friends all the time. And we're having to tell him, you know, he might, he might be healthy. You know, he might be fine. He, maybe he's immune. Maybe he already had it. But the fact is, if if he gets it or passes it on to somebody else and their parents get it or their grandparents, that's that's the danger. It's not always about us. Sometimes it's about other people. It's not always about us. That's you know, so I'm trying to I'm trying to remind him about that. But you know what you're saying, um, I, I try to be calm. Of course, right now I'm with you, I'm with all of our friends, so I'm trying to be okay. But I go crazy too. You know, I get crazy too. Um, and, you know, I remember there have been times in my life, uh, for example, when I lived in Taiwan, when I was very young, uh, when I was 17, I wanted to be a monk. So I moved to Taipei, Taiwan to study Buddhism and Chinese and martial arts. And, you know, it's not quite the same, but sometimes there were typhoons. And for three or four days, I wouldn't be able to go outside. And... Uh, I was, I was, I was very poor. So, um, we didn't have hot water. <laughs> we didn't have hot water. Um, the television, um, was very staticky. The connection was not good. And, and I'm an old guy. So this is way before cell phones and internet. So I had no, I had no communication with my parents or my friends. Um, what I did have were some books and imagination. And so I would write I would write poems or short stories or just thoughts. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of reading and I would encourage people, you know, that was, that's what helped me in my life through all the different traveling was, was reading books and reading the stories and learning about lives of other people in different places, you know, and how, how we're all connected, you know, different languages, different clothes, uh, sometimes different ways of, of living your day but ultimately we're children of parents some of us who are lucky enough to you know to to have kids of our own or or just you know help others with their kids but we're, we're the same we have relationships we have to eat we have to sleep you know we have loves and likes so so reading i think is a, is a really uh is is a gift reading uh, stories and 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 writing stories uh, Mark, you're really so experienced. Uh, uh, did you have thought about writing a book yourself? How, how to use the skills of, uh, you know, the strong, strength, the uh, skills of martial arts? How did you become an actor? How to use your body and physicality and that, at least? Or it could be a story of your truth to somewhere like, have you ever tried to write yourself? And maybe then. Um, well, thank you, Sophia. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm interested. Like, I would. I <laughs> thank will. You. In 10 years, thank you. I'll probably do it. Myself. Thank you. Well, um, I'll, I'll tell you, we are, um, right now, uh, my wife and I are working on a TV series based, based on my teenage years in Germany. So I was born in Hawaii but my parents moved our family to Germany when I was almost 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And we were an American family with a Kung Fu school in um, a very interesting part of town in Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany. So that's where I grew up most of my teen years. And um, 
I, I don't want to say too much, but it was very a very colorful life and mm -hmm. with lots of action and um, lots of <laughs> dynamic relationships. So Your eyes are sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy <laughs> times. <laughs> so, I, so I am working on that. So thank you. I am working on that. And then um, I'm starting to work on some short stories. Maybe, you know, you and I spoke um, yesterday. I... I am working also on a on a one one man show because yes, tell us about that a little bit. You know, like in Russia, there is. I think this is the most thankful country to your work because you have so many fans in here, so many people are like appreciating your. Uh, there's here we have a schools open uh, uh, named after you. Um, so here, if you write a book, everyone like yes, I can see some comments there. Yes, Mark, write a book. Uh, oh, thank so, you, uh, thank you. You're doing one man show, but then think about the book. I'm, I'm, I can publish it here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Hey, let's it. talk about your school. You have an acting school. Well, now we're working on the uh, congratulations online, online, and I, I will need you here. I'm okay. one of the master of our school to show uh, people what to do in front of the camera. But uh, please tell us about the one one man show. Well, well, you know, the, the thing is, I am like you. Um, I've always been very physical in my life. Um, you know, and it's interesting because I talk with my other martial arts friends, and most of them found martial arts on their own, and they love it, and they practice, and they're very passionate. And I was thinking about this. Uh, I do love martial arts. And martial arts um, has been a part of my life since I was a kid and hopefully will always be a part of my life. However, I did not find it myself. My father is a teacher. He taught my mom. And they basically told me, you will practice. You will fight on the weekends. And Sorry to interrupt. I have a question. No. Probably all of the girls would want to ask you, did you ever had a real fight? Yes, I've had real fights and they're not fun. They're, <laughs> not, like, they're not like movie fights. Um, but, you know, did your ability work? <laughs> did your skills, yes. did you use yes. your skills? Of course, of course, the, the, mar you know, the martial arts does help. And, and fortunately, um, the style, the way my father teaches, um, we, we, we basically focus on street self-defense. So yes, we do choreography. Yes, we do some fun tricks. But most of it is uh, for actual self-defense. And a lot of times when we go to my father's class or my mother's class, we don't change. Whatever clothes we come to class in, sometimes they'll say, okay, let's go outside. Huh, that's good. What's that? With whatever shoes you have on, with whatever clothes you have on, with the, however your hair is. Ladies, if you have makeup on, keep your makeup on. You know, mm -hmm. we don't want to ruin the clothes, but let's see how it would actually be if you were walking to your car and somebody attacked you. Mm -hmm. Or um, turn your back and walk down the street, you know, and just sense how it would feel, how, how it would feel with mm -hmm. one or two or three guys walking behind you mm -hmm. how you know what how would you react if somebody tried to corner you in this wall you know and we would practice our martial arts our kicks sometimes without stretching no warm-ups just to get in that frame of mind with the clothes so you know i've, I've had a lot of that training in my life because of my, my mother and father you know uh as practical as we can get without hurting ourselves too bad yeah. Yeah, so, so sure yes the martial arts the martial arts does help it does help i'm sure with the skill of yours probably it's not possible to to get to you like you'll be so fast like oh well, <laughs> I <can see> that. <laughs> well that, <laughs> sophia I, I i thank you i i wish it was more like the movies but um yes. most of the most of most of the street fights i've had i've always taken big hits i've always taken hits and that's why it's really important to be conditioned and, well first of all the, the most important thing is to to stay out of stay out of fights <laughs> that's the first thing. nice <laughs> stay <out of> yes <laughs> yeah, stay out of them it's not worth it you know usually i think back and um you know most but most of the time 
it is not necessary to fight. You know, we, you, you, you know, men, and we, we men, yes, yeah, speak. Or if you know it's dangerous, don't even be there. But most, you know, myself included, we guys, we have these ridiculous egos, and we try to, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it gets in so much trouble, and it's so unnecessary. And the older I get, I realize, oh. I, I'm still stupid, but I was really stupid when I was younger, you know, it's just mamma mia. But, but yes, I, um, I worked in a nightclub when I was 19 years old. I worked in a nightclub hmm. and I was the smallest, uh, one of the smallest uh, security officers in the nightclub. Yes. So I, I fought almost every night. It was, and, and the, the rule was for, for security, we were not allowed to uh, to do anything to until the person line. just needed to get him off, right? Well, we, we couldn't we couldn't do anything until they hit first. So I'm always thinking, okay, here it comes, whoosh, <laughs> and then you move. <laughs> crazy, crazy. I didn't like it, you know, because I, I like people, you know. I don't like to fight, but it, it teaches you. You know, that, that work taught me uh, social skills in terms of trying to talk people down, you know, but because of the job, it's not like I could just leave. That was my job to stay there and, and help with security. So um, I learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work, you know, and I can tell you most of the time, most of the time, it is not like the movies. Oh, <laughs> no. it's not. It doesn't even sound like that. <laughs> Just, no, it's not fun. No. <laughs> there is no slow ammo you know? <laughs> or close up on the eyes. That's right. That's right. No retake if you make a mistake. Right. So then let's go back to your one man show. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, and then uh, we're going to uh, read some questions. I'm sure there's plenty of questions. Okay. Yes, well, I, you, know, I, you know, because, because martial arts has been such a, a huge part of my life, I want to I want to make the show physical. I'd like to show how I started in the different places that I fought in tournaments, but also uh, my training in Taiwan. Uh, talk about the different movies with the capoeira, you know, with Mr. Amen Santo, and then and then also I think a lot of us have that that challenge of of how to be disciplined, how to keep going when you just don't feel like it, you know. I have that struggle every day. Um, oh, I mean, really, every day. How do you keep going? How do you keep yourself inspired? I, and I, I guess my answer is 100% of the time, when I train, when I read, when I push myself to do something that I know is good for me, I always feel better. And when I feel better, I can be better with my wife. I can be better with, with my children. And even my dogs, they know if I'm in a bad mood, they just walk away. It's so funny, they know, you know? So- What can make so, you be in a bad mood? I know you have been always such a, you know. Oh, you know, <laughs> no, Sophia, you know, we, um, we humans, we all have our crazy stories and we all have our head. And I, 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 I I mean, 100%, I, I, I believe that Bruce Lee was right, that our, our biggest opponent, our biggest challenge is our own ego, you know? Sometimes we need it, and sometimes we need to calm it down, but that's the biggest challenge. And so I think, you know, is, is, is every day, what can we do to be positive? We know the world is crazy. We know there are a lot of challenges. We know that people need help. How can we help ourselves so that we can someday, maybe now, help other people? You know, and I think it starts with, with, with us, with each person, you know? And so I want to, in my one-man show, I want to talk about martial arts, how that's helped me throughout, but also about the, the, the natural human challenges that we have in mind, body, and spirit. You know, the young people will get older. You know, and now I'm 56 years old. I've been doing movies since I was 18. I've been training martial arts since I was four or five. Um, I went from living in Hawaii to growing up in Germany, studying martial arts in Taiwan, working in Africa, 
and Israel and all these different places. And I've had some interesting stories, interesting adventures, and I'd like to share that. So, you know, kind of taking all of that and bringing it together. Is there, did you ever think about, uh, about opening your own martial arts school? You know, I, my, my father always wanted me to. And when I was younger, I, I did not think about that. I'm not sure about opening my, my own school, but I am starting to, to be in that place where I want to share and teach before I die, because that's a reality. And, and I think it's really important. I, I like it. You know, um, I'm one of those strange people. I've always thought about death, not because it's morbid or negative. I think it's very positive. If, Part of life. Yes. And if we think about death, if we know we will not be here forever, maybe not even a long time, you appreciate, you appreciate the time you have. And also, if you do have something that you share in love, you want to find other people that have that same passion and share it with them, you know? And it's interesting because as I get older, the more I want to teach, you know? I, I, I told you, um, we spoke yesterday, and I want to teach, um, I'm studying with an incredible teacher named Patsy Rodenberg. And she teaches voice and Shakespeare, and she's prolific and profound and just an amazing woman. And she's from London. Uh, she was at the Guild Hall for over 25 years, I think. And she's, uh, she was head voice at the National Theater and at the Royal Shakespeare Company. And I've been fortunate enough to be one of her students for 15, almost 16 years, I think, something like that. And um, she, has invited me to, to uh, participate in her teacher certification program. So it's a two-year course. I would, I would study with her to, to learn how to actually teach what she teaches. And with the Shakespearean voice and with my martial arts and acting, um, I'd like to combine that and, and share. So that's one of my long-term goals if I, if I keep living for a while. Yes, uh, you, you, you almost made me cry when you said about that, but this is so true, and we do forget about that because our ego is so bad, what you're saying. So the goal of your one-man show would be to just, you know, remind people of the moment, the happiness, or, or wow, what is the main goal of your show? Do you find it uh, fun or more deep when you're out there? with your audience when you do your one man show do you share your life with the goal of like guys enjoy enjoy each moment is that the main thing that you're saying there or you're just sharing your experience which is so interesting and well, thank you sophia well you know um so i uh, i've done i've done little bits and pieces of of what i want to do in the show because i I've, I've not formally put the whole show together yet and i haven't formally uh done the it's it'll probably be about one hour one hour to one hour and 15 minutes so i haven't done it in its entirety i've only done little pieces in workshops and talked about little things in interviews but yes i think i th I think, you know, I think it's really important to connect with who you're performing with or for. Uh, I, I, I want to connect with the audience when I'm on the stage. And I think you're right. Yes, um, you are right. It, it is about really shining the light on the present. Really shining the light on the present because, you know, yesterday happened, you know, to tomorrow may not come we only have right now and i think i know if we live like that you're less likely to miss yesterday because you were there you were in it you know i feel like when i was young when i was in germany when i was in in taiwan um when i was in hawaii 
um, you know, I, and I, and I think it was, uh, it's an advantage and disadvantage to not have um, cell phones because, you know, I couldn't distract myself with this. I had to be wherever I was. And so those memories are so indelibly ingrained in my head. Mm -hmm. And now as an actor and as a parent and as a performer, I can bring back those memories and those feelings and, and help them help me tell stories, you know? Um, but I don't want to discount technology because thanks to cell phones and technology, I'm able to connect with you and all of you out there. Yes, so, it's so that's yeah. good too. <laughs> it's so different. I, we have so many questions. Okay, guys. Okay. Uh, let me say a little bit to my Russian audience. Привет, ребята! С нами Марк Дакаска. Спасибо всем, кто присоединился к нам к эфиру. Мы заговорились, потому что давно не виделись и соскучились. И очень много всего происходило за а, эти 10 лет. Но с момента, там, как мы снимали эту картину, конечно, мы виделись после этого. Но, тем не менее, всегда приятно пообщаться. Тем более, когда сейчас есть а, больше времени, возможности на этот так, как все мы сидим на карантине. Вот, и мы вышли с Марком в прямой эфир. Вот, он задавает себе вопрос. Вот некоторые интересные вопросы. А, здесь у меня есть Марк. Марк, uh, why do you always play a bad guy? Because I'm a bad guy. <laughs> You're so nice, but why do you always play a bad guy? Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. That's uh, that's a good question, and I. Wow, you know it's interesting because when I was in my teens and twenties, it was more. It was more good guy, but once I got into my early thirties, yeah, a lot of bad guys. And, Why? Oops, sorry. I don't know. You know, I, I said maybe one of the things is that for me, I don't look at it, I don't look at any of my characters as good or bad. I look at them as people yeah. trying to survive. In their mind, they're doing what they need to do. Uh, <laughs> Who said you know? I'm playing a bad guy? I'm not bad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I killing think I, these people because yeah. they deserve it. <laughs> but, but see, I think, you know, but Sophia, this is, this is the thing. This is what's interesting. I, um, and this is not um, from me. I heard this uh, from, from another actor, and I can't remember who or actress. But the thing is, bad, bad characters or evil characters, they don't think they're evil. They're doing what's right for them. The problem is it's only right for them and not right for other people. Heroes, <laughs> heroes do the right thing for other people, right? Uh, bad guys do it for them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we're not, but, yeah, we're not playing yeah. a bad guy. We're just us. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 I guess I guess <laughs> why I play them. Um, uh, I don't go out of my way just to say I want to be a bad guy. You know, all the time. I, I I don't I don't do that at all. I um I get offers sometimes, and if I like the character, I'll play it, or I'll audition for something. And uh, a lot of times, I guess it is the antagonist. But like I said, I don't play, I don't try to play it like the evil guy. I play it as a, as a real life human being, you know? Yeah. I don't know why I'm playing bad guys so much. I don't no, know. Yeah, so it's not our choice, guys. They choose no. us and that's <laughs> our job. That's the answer, basically. Um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, so there was something about an Irish flag marking and sent to an Irish flag. That's something I don't know about. Well, I, you know, I'm part Irish. My grandfather, um, Ray, Raymond Lloyd McVeigh. So I have, uh, I have a lot of Irish blood in me. That's why. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, how can you? You know, how, how do you keep up to all those discipline, disciplines? That's discipline. That's keep what up know? to all those disciplines. Well, um, I think just discipline is, 
that's one of the biggest challenges uh, for me at least. Um, and what is discipline? Yeah. D discipline? There is, I'm answering the guy, sorry. Okay. And, and you know, I think um, what is what is discipline? I think discipline is self-love. Mm -hmm. Discipline is doing something sometimes that maybe you don't want to do, but you do it anyway with your heart, with passion, because it's easy to just you know do something, but that's not discipline. That's being robotic. Discipline. I think is overriding the natural instinct of being lazy uh, and seeking pleasure for something that will give you pleasure long term. Or no after excuses. That. If you decided to do it, you must. So you can yeah. really. Yeah. And and I heard from um, I think uh, this this wonderful uh, motivational speaker David Meltzer. He said, uh, "Just lower the bar. So don't don't." Don't, you know, if you're starting to train, don't say I'm going to do 100 push-ups a day. Say I'm going to do maybe just 10, 10 a day. So I think, and I think that's help, very helpful. If you lower the bar and make it easy, you, you learn how to get disciplined by doing, you know, whether it be push-ups or you're going to say you're going to read a book. And instead of reading two chapters, maybe I'll just read one chapter or maybe just 10 pages. You know, I think lower the bar, make it easy, uh, entry level to start, and then you can build discipline. But that's what it is. Discipline is consistency and, and working when you don't want to work with heart for me. Right. There's another question for you. Thank you for answering that. Um, there is mm, Benny, Benny. Taffy, and I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, he's Hello, asking, how, is, how can he send you a Irish flag? An Irish flag? Uh, right. Uh, and, a, um, a real Irish flag? Uh-huh. And one more question. Has you, have you been, uh, Mark, have you been to uh, Brandon Lay's grave? Ah, okay. So, Thank you. Okay, so first question. So um, Irish flag? <laughs> um, um, Sophia, if you don't mind, would he be able to maybe send it to your studio? And then, yes, why not? And I'm going to leave it to okay. the person of my studio and I'm going to Okay, perfect. And then we'll, we'll do it that way. And thank you for the flag. Is it uh, Benjamin? Is it, what was it? His name? Ben, uh, it, ben. it was Ben, right? Yes. Benny with Benny. the flag. Thank you, Benny with the flag. Thank you. Hello um, from Ukraine, Mark. Oh, 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 Sophia, the other question was? Yes. Uh, have um, you been to the... Mm. Uh, Brandon Lee's grave. I, I have not been to Brandon Lee's grave, but uh, uh, someday I would like to go because I understand it's right next to Bruce Lee's. So I could give my love and respect to both wonderful men, inspirational men. There was a story that you just guys reminded me when I came to LA, I just landed back home where I, you know, at, at that time I lived. And I always heard that, you know, all the actors need to go at least once to the uh, Marilyn Monroe's place where she's there. And so I went there and I sat there just, you know, I, I had 12 hours flight on the plane. And the first thing without getting home on the way, I stopped by the great Marilyn Monroe. And I remember I sat there thinking, you know, so now I do what I have to do many years ago. I'm here on the road. <laughs> and I see those tourists passing by and one woman one woman said to her mother, look, she's thinking she's Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> so awful. I, up, I felt like I'm a poor fan sitting on the, on the ground, you know, and think I still want to be Marilyn Monroe. I'm coming there every day and praying to be her. And it's just so, so funny, but yeah. <laughs> Common movie. What my, is your common movie? My movie. Uh, common movie. I guess some movie. 
a couple. I, I, I'm not sure I understand. Something that's going to release soon. Oh, oh, oh. Um, oh, yes. So uh, I have one called One Night in Bangkok, and that should come out. It's a Lionsgate released it uh, some on, on streaming, and I think it's late summer. Да, да, да. Друзья, вот мы снова здесь, и прошу прощения, что наш эфир прервался, мы возвращаемся к Марку, сейчас он к нам присоединиться. Прошел час нашего эфира, очень интересный разговор с Марком Стаскасом, который сейчас находится в Лос-Анджелесе со своей семьей, так же, как и все мы переживаем карантин, события последних дней, которые сильно повлияли на киноиндустрию и вообще на весь мир в целом. Сейчас к нам присоединится Марк обратно, напишу ему с второго телефона, что нам нужно вот он, он возвращается. Я прошу прощения за то, что пропускаю вопросы, невозможно оторваться и дослушать внимательно Марка. Вот, мы сейчас возвращаемся, и сейчас эту часть нашего эфира уделим побольше вашим вопросам. Марк, Марк. Sophia, I don't know what happened. Yes, it's it cut me one off. other person turned off, but we have so many questions and people okay. are excited and thank you for this oh, live chat. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We, we made the evening of many people for us home now and just, you know. Thank you. Well, thank um, you for being with us, everyone. Thank you. And Sophia, thank you for having us. Yes. Well, there is, um, are you twins? There is a question to you. Are you twins? Do you have a twin brother or sister? Uh, I, I have no, no twin brother or sister, but I do have brothers and sisters. Uh, hello from Turkey. We, uh, when will you come to Turkey? Oh, goodness. I, I love Turkey. I've been to Istanbul one, two, three, four times. And one time was just to hang out in your beautiful country and city. I don't know when I'm going to be back, but I hope soon. I hope soon. Thank you. There's a list of countries that... that that you need to say hello to. So I'm going to say the name and you repeat. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> There's a list. All right. So, Mark, say hello to Germany. Hi, Germany. <laughs> hello, Deutschland. Wie geht's? <laughs> say hello to Russia. Hi, Russia. Russia. Ruski. Say hello to New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Hello. Spain. Espanol. Spain. Hello. Canada. Canada. I've been there many times. I hope to be back soon. Argentina. Argentina. Wow. Beautiful. Hello, Argentina. Brazil. Hello, Argentina. <laughs> Brazil. Obrigado. Uh, Indonesia. Indonesia. Oh, uh, I have many Nico and a lot of friends in Indonesia. I hope to visit someday. Yes. So say hi to UK. UK, of course. I was just there. Lovely. Switzerland. Switzerland, Schweiz, hello. Philippines. Philippines, oh, I'm part Filipino. <laughs> Salamat po. <laughs> yes, yes, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. You and I were there together. Beautiful yes. country, love Kazakhstan. That's where you made that twist around yourself. Is that, is that where? <laughs> In the air. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I survived. <laughs> uh, Poland. Poland, oh, never been, would love to go. Hello, Poland. Hello. Hello, Tanzania. Hi, Tanzania. Tanzania. Hello. And Nidra. Oh, Tanz is it Tanzania? Yes. Sorry. Tanzania. Hello, Tanzania. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> uh, Nederland. Nederland. Been there many times. Love it. Hello. And Ukraine. Ukraine. I've been there one time. Lovely so, place. Hello, hello, guys. Hello, uh, Ukraine. From those countries, we're so happy to have you with Thank us. Thank you for being with us. Yes, and, and is there many more, more questions to Mark? Um, okay. And yes, that question I think, a uh, question I already asked, uh, there was, <clears throat> uh, are you planning, uh, would you start to an extension of your dad's school? I think I asked that earlier. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I definitely want to share what my mother and father taught me. So I'll, I'll try to figure out how to deal, whether it be uh, in just in group classes at, um, at a different studio or a small club. We, we shall see. I'm not sure. 
Yes, maybe we'll we'll create something in Russian. <laughs> we'll Thank create, you. create a school here. And um, who was your uh, idol in your high school? Because you're the idol of many people in Russia. And who was your idol? That was the well, last question. So my, you know, my my parents, I thought, well. They were they were my first two idols, because uh, my mother and father they they could do martial arts, and they did the, you know amazing things with their weapons, and uh, they were just physical creatures but with great spirit and wonderful teachers. So those two uh, were my first two idols, but then I saw Bruce Lee, and. That was my first movie idol, Bruce Lee. Right, Bruce Lee. And, and he still is uh, an idol for me. Yes, so that was so nice to talk to you. And um, I mean, you just inspired me. You reminded me of the time where I, when, I, when I lived in LA and I feel like I miss this place. Oh. And um, you inspired me personally to not rush to stay home to think and focus to remember and go over the things i've learned before and um, thank you so much for making this chat so deep and you know sophia thank you for having me thank you for having me and i'm, I'm so happy that we've stayed connected and i'm so proud of what you're doing yes i'm trying my best you're doing it. You're doing it. I also want to say thank you to FPR Bureau, whose idea it was to create this chat with the actors for me on my uh, page. And oh, yes, well, thank so you let's, to your let's, team. let's speak again. Let's see how this quarantine goes, and we'll see. Maybe we're we're going to stay home a little longer than we uh, we expected, and then we're going to give some more advices, and maybe our, our understanding of the situation will change. So. Let's okay. speak again in a few weeks. And I'd love that. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Sophia. Paka. <laughs>